Hey, welcome Snow Tracks YouTubers. We have got another insightful walk around for you today, except uh, insightful isn't just going to cover the whole gamut of what's going on here. This is probably the most anticipated new sled in our fleet this year. Here's what we got. We have got a 2023 Matrix 850 two-stroke turbo uh, VR1. A lot of handles for this one, but most important word, turbo. This is an exciting new snowmobile, and it actually is the beginning of something pretty cool in this business. I would ask you to think about this for a second. Do you know of any other industry in the power sports business, in the automotive business, that is spending develop money, development money on two-stroke uh, engines? Nope, <laughs> pretty much nobody. Everything has gone four-stroke, and here we are standing with probably the most innovative two-stroke ever built uh, in, in, in uh, the modern era, at least, certainly by a, a factory uh, manufactured by an OEM. It's a very, very interesting uh, episode. It's an interesting project that the OEs have taken on, and Polaris is, uh, is on the cutting edge of this. So what have we got? Uh, overall, you got the Matrix bodywork, okay? You've got Walker Evans Racing compression side adjustable shocks on the front and on the rear arm, and just a regular non-adjustable preload adjustable, but not damping adjustable shock on the front arm. It's a 137, and it needs to be because there's a lot going on here, a lot of power. And let's, uh, we'll start at the back. We usually start at the front, but we've got so much to talk about about the motor, we don't want to miss out on giving you the details on, uh, on the suspension. This is a 137 skid. This is a VR1, but that skid looks an awful lot like an XCR skid to me. It has the fancy uh, rail doublers. It has the uh, CNC billet machined uh, rear scissors stop, which is very meaty, very big, and it's set pretty aggressively to couple early. I'll talk about that in just a second. You've got, as I said, a 137 by 15 wide, and I think this track is a 1375. We were having some debate about this, um, but for sure it is not an ice ripper, which, okay, you know I'm big on ice rippers, and I really am, but on this sled with this kind of power, ice rippers are only going to do you good on deceleration going around corners, not on acceleration, because this thing can just rip and spin the track like crazy. The bulk of these that are sold, by the way, they are all sold. Uh, the bulk of these being sold will all get traction studs. The kind of purchaser, I was going to say guy, but it could be a girl uh, who buys a uh, 180 horsepower, arguably, snowmobile uh, is going to put traction studs in it. And you really should because you're not getting all you paid for unless you do. Okay, so that's the back end. Interesting uh, issues with the back end, though. Polaris has put in the RMK style uh, heat exchangers or cooler strips that are thinned. The, the ones on, on uh, a VR1 that is not a turbo, it's just a trail sled, 850, would not have fins on it. These are thinned all the way up. And of course, you know it's a five piece tunnel. You've got the side piece, you've got a cooler, you've got a middle piece, you've got a cooler, you've got the side piece. And uh, it's a built up tunnel. It's a very strong, very lightweight tunnel. Running boards are very aggressive. Nice angle on them, really comfortable. Okay, here's another weird one. Because of the turbo packaging, the battery either didn't fit under hood or it got too hot wherever it was mounted. I, I suspect it was in a heat area on the right-hand side is where it usually, was, it usually is. This is the battery right in the back part of the seat. Do, uh, don't forget that these things have got crazy storage capacity, uh, all the matrix, matrix sleds. So they've taken up about that much of it for the battery to get the battery out of the front of the sled. Probably good from a weight uh, balance standpoint, but here's uh, just a little scuttle on weight. This is not uh, boilerplate, but you could argue that there's a hundred pounds less in this turbocharged uh, 850 two-stroke than there is in the three competing four-stroke turbocharged sleds. This is a, arguably 100 pounds, maybe give or take, uh, depending on which one you're talking about, the Yamaha, the Arctic Cat, or the Skidoo, four-stroke. So it's, it's light, and that's gonna be kind of my theme on this walk around, is the reason I'm so pumped about this thing is, 
is it's just as, as light as a feather. It's easy to ride like an 850, which is easy to ride like a 650. The 650 and the 850 only vary by one pound in their, uh, in their uh, wet weight. This sled here is, is just like a feather and it responds to throttle like telepathically. It's really exciting sled to ride. If, if you're a speed freak, oh wait, you're a snowmobiler? Yes, uh, if, you're, if you're into going fast, uh, you gotta sample this snowmobile. You gotta get yourself a ride on it. It's really a fun sled. Right out of the box, factory warranty, two year factory warranty on it. And they wanna build confidence in this engine. And I have been building confidence in this engine because I've put about 500 kilometers on it in the last five or six days. And I am just nothing but impressed with it, even impressed with the gas mileage. I mean, you're feeding a lot of horses there. So let's talk about how many horses you're feeding. Uh, Polaris says that this is 10% more powerful than a normally aspirated 850. A normally aspirated 850, you know, everybody's had their kick at the can with the dynamometer. It's, it's 165 horsepower. So that makes this somewhere uh, in the high 170s, maybe low 180s. But I was just uh, goofing around on the internet. Don't do that, There's, it, it really isn't productive. But I wanted to see if there was any dyno reports out from independent organizations, and there are. And some of them say that this engine puts out, right the way it sits, 190 plus horsepower whether that's properly corrected for altitude and all those kind of things and barometric pressure and whatever, uh, who knows, but it makes a lot of power. And the good news is, is that you can argue about how much power it makes, but hey, the big deal is, is how light it is. As I said, arguably a hundred pounds lighter than the competitors. So um, yeah, that's what they're doing. Okay, so underneath the hood, we have got, and I normally don't like to take the hoods apart because for some reason when I do this on camera, they don't go back together the way they're supposed to, but we'll take a chance today. I wanted to show you what we've got here. Okay, so this side looks pretty normal except that on a regular normally aspirated non-turbo, there's airbox material right in here on the back side of the, uh, of the oil tank. But what I wanted to show you was, was the primary clutch. This is the Polaris S22 clutching combo. This comes out of the off-road division where they're running turbocharged four strokes making 180 and then the four cylinder uh, Razor making 225 horsepower. This uh, clutch is automatically belt height adjusting. So the secondary is always trying to push the belt right out of the top of the secondary. When you're going slow and this back shifts all the way to full closed, it, it is pushing on the belt to keep it tight. So if you did that, and you didn't put a bearing like Polaris has done in the post of the primary, you'd burn the daylights out of the belt. It would be bad. The belt would get melting on the, uh, on the post because this would be choking it, pulling back so hard on it. So they've gone with this uh, very stout, very capable clutching combo for, uh, uh, for the, the turbo. Only the turbo gets that, uh, gets that primary and secondary, sorry, the secondary is, uh, okay, I'm just gonna leave that like that, and then it won't embarrass me. Okay, uh, the engine is your stock 850, except for the pistons, the rods and the crank, the crank bearings, the cases, all of that are standard issue Patriot, the pistons are not, and of course, this uh, develops uh, boost because it's turbocharged, and that puts extra strain on, uh, extra strain on the pistons. It could liken it to taking a small finishing hammer and tapping on your head, or taking a sledgehammer and tapping on your head. You would, you would definitely feel the, the difference in those two weights, and that's what you're doing. You're squishing a charge that starts off at bottom dead center at as much as plus three PSI, and then that increases through the stroke of the piston. Um, it's not intercooled, okay? So just in case uh, you've read anything about that or you've heard people talking about it, it is not intercooled, which is kind of interesting out of the gate that they wouldn't have intercooled it. Um, the big question is, will they intercool it in the future or can they? And I would say, do frogs fart on lily pads? Yes, they do. And you can bet your boots that they've got up their sleeve an intercooler package if necessary in the future with this. I can't imagine them just uh, saying no to that idea because it's, 
it's always the next step with a turbocharged motor is to go to an intercooler. Having said that, I don't know if that's true or not. I'm just speculating and having fun talking to you about it. Okay, uh, the motor uh, is just fabulously clutched. I know there's aftermarket clutch stuff available, but I got to tell you, we ride a lot of snowmobiles, try out a lot of snowmobiles, and this thing uh, engages nice and easy, nice and smooth. But better than that, it backshifts like, like crazy. You can run it on this lake here, you can run it down the lake at, uh, say, 75 miles an hour and let it shift up and the motor settles down quite nicely. But when you stab the, the loud flipper, w when you get into the throttle, man, I'll tell you, it backshifts instantly, pulls right up to 8250. And it's so consistent to, to go from, from whatever RPM you're running, when you whack the throttle to wide open, it goes to 8250 like it's programmed. Wait, it is. It's programmed by the ECU to do that. And uh, it's very, very effective, very, very well clutched. Um, let's go around the other side. We'll just talk a bit about some details there. This bodywork, uh, just in case you're wondering, is not specifically for a turbo. This, the, the, the power package, the whole thing put together in this, fits in there so good they were able to use the regular uh, matrix bodywork, which is pretty incredible. Now there's some extra venting here. Uh, and it's, it's not worth worrying about, but there's a little bit of extra venting to let some, the, the turbo's right here, and uh, they, they wanna get the heat out of there. Never once that I've ridden it so far have I gotten a hot right foot, which I think is pretty remarkable. The brake is right here, the turbo's here, and the brake is really well vented. It's got like an XCR style brake uh, vent on the, uh, on the back of this fender when you take it off. And uh, it's getting a lot of cool air, and I've had no issues with it overheating. I've had no issues with it lugging, lugging along on a trail at, you know, at engagement. It gauges around 4, 4,500. Um, I've had no issues with it, uh, you know, smelly, like something's burning, like it's too hot. It just seems to be really happy being a turbo uh, for all intents and purposes. Okay, um, uh, over the bars. Let's take a look at what we got here. Oh man, I can't believe this. I almost forgot. And I know you would have beat me up like crazy. I didn't start it up for you. And this is worth listening to too. So hang on, here we go. Polaris's all do that. There you go. As promised, we ran it up. It sounds like it's just like a wild animal. I'm telling you, it's, it's so much fun to ride. It's not noisy, but it's got a really deep throaty intake sound. Okay, so I wanted to go back to the back of the sled again and just give you a little insight into the, uh, the uh, bump stop, the coupler block, the scissor stop, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's set really aggressively. What I mean aggressively, it has a reduced amount of uncoupled movement. The reason for that is because what's under the hood. It, it, this sled at 50 miles an hour, 80 kilometers here in Canada, when you dip into the throttle hard at, at 50 miles an hour, it lifts the skis. And I know everybody's got a story about that, but that, this is true. It, it, just, it just rocks back in the skid. So uh, to prevent the thing from, you know, basically doing a two and a half foot wheelie, like two and a half feet off the snow with the skis, it couples pretty quick and that keeps the nose down but you definitely know the nose is up when you give it uh, a full throttle squeeze so it's different uh, suspension settings than an 850 uh, normally aspirated because it has this enormous amount of power the power kicks in just uh, fyi right at 6000 rpm you can almost drive it with the tachometer and and go in and out of the boost there's not a lot of boost going on below 6,000, some, but, but not a lot. But at 6,000, it really beats its fist on its chest and, uh, and starts to yell at you, and it's ready to go. And beyond 6,000 up to 8,250, it is golly, I'll tell you if, you know, if you had to pay to get a ride on one of these, just get your credit card out and do it. I mean, it is so much fun. It is so different 
being light and, and flickable compared to a four-stroke turbo. It's just, it's, it's the dawn of a new era. We'll see how long it lasts. I think these things are gonna sell like ice cream on a hot day. But um, uh, anyway, uh, I wanted you to understand why the rear arm couples up so quick, and that's to keep the nose down. It's very playful on trails. If you wanna ride it aggressively on, on uh, pretty fast trails, it's fine. It doesn't wheelie mid-turn or anything like that. It will, but generally speaking, uh, when you're applying the throttle and, and you know feeding it throttle, um, it's, it's pretty well behaved keeping the front end down. It's when you go beyond 6,000 RPM that things get a little crazy. Okay, uh, that covers all the rear skid. Front suspension, what can you say about it? It's the best working front suspension in the business, provides the best handling, the best corner carving. Um, we've said that for a number of years and we continue to say it. How much better is it? Well, the other guys are getting really good and so it's less better than it was. Not that this has gone backwards, this has stayed the same. The other guys are working hard to catch up, but it is a great IFS and uh, Polaris calls it, it's uh, racing derived or whatever you want to call it. That's fine, racing derived sounds good, but uh, it is a very effective front end. And another thing that's interesting is it's a very durable front end. It's a cast bulkhead and uh, the, the A-arms are stout. You have to really screw up to bend or break anything in the front of this. The bulkhead is, is almost indestructible, but anyway, don't get into that too seriously. You, you don't want to be uh, attempting to destroy bulkheads. So, uh, okay, over the bars, let's have a quick peek here. This is really, really a nice place to do business. This S7 thing is so cool and uh, so easy to view when you're riding. It falls right into your lower peripheral. You don't have to take your eyes off the, uh, uh, off the trail to read RPM and, my, uh, and mile per hour. And I love having the engine temp up front. Now you can change that. You can make different things, a whole suite of different things come up and you can make it look different too as well, completely different. But this S7 is still the benchmark. It's GPS oriented. It doesn't require cell phone connection. So, you know, no matter where you are and quite often where we are places where cell phones <laughs> don't work, this works because it's GPS hooked up. Uh, nice aluminum bars, nice uh, haze uh, rear brake. I need to talk about the brake a little bit. This is a uh, jack shaft mounted brake. So pretty much everybody else is moving towards drive axle brakes, but personally I'm very thankful Polaris hasn't because there is no better modulation experience. Somebody uh, made a comment on the last test I did and said they wanted me to say proprietary and modulation. How did I do? Do you like that? Anyway, uh, the, the depth of modulation because the jack shaft is spinning so fast in contrast to the drive axle, it makes the brake work better. It's smoother. So it only locks up if you want to lock it up. If you take it that far, it, it has just way better feel. That's another word for modulation. And, uh, it, it, works, it works really, really well, and uh, uh, Polaris has a racing brake pad, a spec that, that is for racing sleds, and this has those pads on it. Okay, uh, over here on the left side switch gear, you've got the new uh, smart warmers, which you can use your 7S to set the temperature, and uh, you, just, you just scroll through. You get left and right and thumb, and you set them to three presets. And so as you cycle through this button, you have three preset heats and it will maintain those heat, the, those levels of heat to within a couple of degrees, maybe even one degree. It maintains the heat that you preset. So if you put it on high, on high and you're running in a crosswind and you, know, you would think that your right hand, if it, the wind was coming from this direction, that it would cool off this grip, it won't. This grip will stay the same temperature as the left grip. It's kind of neat and uh, it's definitely a comfort advantage. Relatively low bar riser, good for a trail sled. Decent looking windshield. I like this windshield. Um, there's a bigger one. It looks like it came out of a hockey arena, but this one here is, is nice. It, it, it's got a, a really good level of effectiveness. It keeps you warm, keeps the wind off you. And Polaris has made a lot of noise about the, the uh, design of these back panels here where your knees go. And uh, the whole profile of the sled creates more of a uh, 
a, a low wind velocity pocket around the rider and in front of the rider. And th they've done a good job with that because it is, it's a warm sled to ride. But when it's all said and done, who cares about all this stuff? It's what's under that hood on this sled that counts. This thing is a rocket. You will, you will absolutely giggle till the ice cream comes out of your nose if you get a ride on one of these. It is so fast, accelerates so hard, and so much fun to ride. Polaris has done a great job. Hats off to him on this. This is uh, breaking new ground. I don't think anybody really figured that they were going to do it until we saw it, and uh, we've been pretty excited ever since then. So uh, will you do me a favor? Will you push the, the like and subscribe buttons? Please, please do that for us because we're almost at 100,000 uh, subscribers and we really appreciate that if you push those buttons on the screen here and uh, that would be really great. And until next time, we'll have a full test ride on Snow Tracks TV of this. But until next time, we'll see you on our next walk around. Thanks for tuning in.